Hey there, everybody. Here is a quick book review of Horace, The Complete Odes and Epodes. If you have never dived into Roman poetry and uh, you don't really want to read something the length of the Aeneid or Ovid's Metamor Metamorphoses, then Horace is your guy. I have spoken to uh, a Latin teacher and she said when she introduces her students to Horace, they fall in love with him immediately. And I think that's great. Um, very readable, very enjoyable poetry, and uh, I had a good time with this. So this is all translated by a man named W.G. Shepard. He did a really good job overall. I think that there was one spot where I had a little nitpick, very minor one. He used the word Shanghai. I'm like, I don't think the ancient Romans had the word Shanghai, but they had the concept, certainly, which is why he translated it in that way. So when we read the word Shanghai, we understand someone was kidnapped against their will and pressed into service uh, somewhere in some capacity. We get that. So minor nitpick. Who cares? Uh, in these opodes, these tend to be a bit longer than the odes later on, but usually these are less than a page. This, the, <laughs> this one, Parentis Oldham, I had this on my community tab, the whole thing, I took a photo of it. Um, it was hilarious. It's about garlic, and I just loved reading this. I laughed out loud because uh, I, <laughs> I didn't expect it, and I've read it several times since. Very enjoyable. And what I've got to say is, now, so I got this book off of A Books, right? I think I think it came from either Second Sale in Illinois or from Half Price Books down in Texas. But either way, um, you don't have to buy physical copies of this. All of this is in the public domain. All of these writings are over 100 years old. They're in the public domain. You can find them um, online. Older translations, of course. This was translated in the 80s. But... You can find it for free. You don't have to spend the money. It's worth it to me to have this on my bookshelf so I can keep coming back to it. I prefer physical media. I'm just I'm just one of those guys. I'm a little old fashioned that way. I don't like looking at screens all the time, which is funny because you're looking at a screen right now. <laughs> there's some there's some irony there or something. Anyway, really enjoyed this book. And then in the odes. There were some things, I, I marked a lot of things. I'm just interested to see um, how Horace wrote about fate uh, whenever fate came up, when it was mentioned. And to that end, I just want to look at Odes Book 1, and it's Ode number 11. And it says, Do not inquire. We may not know what end the gods will give Leucoe. Do not attempt Babylonian calculations. The better course is to bear whatever will be, whether Jove allot more winters, or this is the last which exhausts the Tuscan sea with pumice rocks exposed. Be wise, decant the wine, prune back your long-term hopes. Life ebbs as I speak, so seize each day and grant the next no credit. This is the ode where we get the phrase carpe diem, seize each day, or just seize the day, carpe diem. So Horace is the one who popularized that, that phrase. And this poem in particular is very Epicurean in flavor. So at the time that Horace was writing, there were two popular philosophies. There was Stoicism and Epicureanism. And Roman poets at the time tended to be Epicurean in nature. And that is, enjoy life's goodness now while you've got it. Kind of make the most of pleasure, right? Pleasure can't be a bad thing. Whereas Stoics are, adversity is to be embraced because virtue is the higher call. Um, not necessarily that you uh, put yourself through adversity on purpose, not like you deprive yourself of good things on purpose, but that when adversity comes to you, to embrace it. Um, that's just kind of a, a, a rough um, overview of those two opposing views as far as, far as when it comes to pleasure. Um, so I thought that was interesting. This is very Epicurean in, in flavor. But it's full of poems, you know, like that and of different 
uh, different types. Now you notice I read a funny looking name there. Horace wrote in an era when you had to have a patron. So this would be a wealthy person who would pay you money to write. And so you would write things with their name because the idea was this would last a long time beyond the lifetime of the writer, beyond the lifetime of the patron. And it's a way of having a legacy. And some poets would really um, dive in headlong with that and kind of overdo it with saying how wonderful and virtuous and amazing their patron is. Kind of <laughs> a little bit of a, um, it's just overdone, right? Gaudy kind of writing. And other poets are just naturally like they're having a conversation. And uh, Horace does that pretty well, I think. And so does... So does uh, Virgil in his other writings beside the Aeneid, which I'll get to eventually in reviews. But I had marked uh, areas where um, it had mentioned uh, the gods or fate, those kinds of things. Not all of them, just some of them that struck my, my interest. Because I'm just trying to get a sense also of how these people at this time thought about fate. Um, but that's beside the point. That's my own interest. So I definitely recommend Horace. If you're looking for getting your feet wet with Roman poetry and you really don't want to go to Ovid or Virgil, that's fine. I would say go directly to Horace. And that's that's a great place to be. And if Horace is the only Roman poet you ever explore, that's just fine too. I think it's worth it. All right, everybody, that's it for now. Hope you have a great day.